Hi, it's Ethan again, and welcome back to the third video in this series on how to draw the human figure. If you're just joining us and you missed the previous two videos, please be sure to watch it now and then come back to this one. Just click on the link below to watch them. So, in the last video, we covered the basics of human proportion and learned to construct a human stick figure completely from scratch. Now it's time to take it one step further and learn about perspective. Perspective is basically the art of making two-dimensional drawings look three-dimensional. It's extremely important in figure drawing because as soon as you want to draw a figure in any other position than the standard front view, you need to understand how perspective will change the way that figure will look. Otherwise, your drawing will never look realistic. For example, here's a drawing of a brick without the use of perspective. It looks flat and very uninteresting. Now here's the same brick drawn with the use of perspective. It looks much more realistic and fun to look at. That's how much of a difference a little bit of perspective can make. Now, perspective can be a very complex subject, so we won't be able to cover everything in this short video. But I will try to do my best to give you a quick crash course and teach you the most important elements that will make the biggest difference to your drawing. Then we'll go through a step-by-step -step practical exercise and show you how to draw your first three-dimensional figure. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so let's begin by covering some of the basic elements of a perspective drawing. Um, the first element you need to be familiar with is called the horizon line. And the horizon line is this horizontal line here that stretch across this drawing. Um, it's defined as the uh, eye level of the observer in the drawing. So basically, every perspective drawing is drawn from the point of view of an observer. So in this drawing, um, the observer is standing somewhere somewhere around here on the train track and looking in this direction and we're seeing the drawing uh, as if from his eyes and so the the horizon line is basically the eye level where that observer is looking if that observer was sitting down um, then the horizon line would be slightly lower if that observer was up in the air flying let's say um, then the horizon line would be higher up in the sky. And the reason the horizon line is important is because it's, um, it determines the point of view of the drawing and how everything else will look. Um, and another reason why it's important is because it's the place where you will find the vanishing point. And that's the second element of perspective drawing, the vanishing point. Uh, the vanishing point would be this point right here, okay? This tiny dot, and it's the it's called a vanishing point because it's the point where everything in the drawing seems to disappear to. Now that's due to a uh, an important rule of perspective, and that is, as something move further away from your eyes, it will appear smaller. So, for example, if you take a look at this pencil, um, it it's of a certain size, right? Uh, but as I move it away from the camera, it gets smaller and smaller. And if I were able to keep moving it away from the camera that way, it would eventually get so small that it disappear into a dot. And that's what the vanishing point is. Everything in this picture yields to this vanishing point and disappear into it. So um, this plank of wood right here on the rail each one of these plank of wood are the same size, but because as they move further away from the observer, they get smaller and smaller until they disappear into a dot at the vanishing point. Same applies to these telephone poles. They get smaller and shorter as they move towards the vanishing point. And same applies for the house. Uh, the house happened to be cut off right here, but if it was to be extended, in this direction, uh, you would see it disappearing into a vanishing point as well. That's why you'll notice that everything in this drawing um, can be connected to the vanishing point by a straight line. Um, the railroad connects to it. The, the house is sloped in a way that uh, makes it converge towards the vanishing point, And the same goes with the telephone pole. So in this regard, the vanishing point is probably the most important element in a perspective drawing because 
everything in the drawing is measured against it. Everything yields towards it, and it's the uh, the center point of the entire drawing. Okay, so that's pretty much the two most important elements of uh, the drawing. Now let's talk about different types of perspective uh, drawing. So with regard to uh, perspective drawing, there's actually three types. First, we have one point perspective, and that would be illustrated by this right here. It's called one point perspective because it only has one vanishing point. So there's the sole vanishing point in the drawing, and all the lines uh, that's going this direction converge towards the vanishing point. And the vertical and the horizontal line is unaffected. Okay. The second type is called two-point perspective, and that's where you have two vanishing points. In this case, um, all the lines that are going this direction and in this direction have to converge towards the vanishing point, but the, ver uh, the vertical lines are unaffected. Okay. And there's another third kind of perspective drawing called three-point perspective, and that's basically when you have uh, in addition to these two vanishing point, a third vanishing point somewhere down in this direction in the vertical dimension. And in that case, even the vertical lines will converge towards that vanishing point. Uh, you don't see a lot of three points perspective usually, and it's um, when you do see it, it's more of a fish eye distorted look. Okay, so we won't be covering three points perspective in this video. Uh, mainly, we'll be more concerned with two-point perspective, okay? Now, with regard to two-point perspective, there's something you should know about uh, the distance between the vanishing point. So, if you look at this drawing right here, you have the two vanishing points at the far end of um, the paper, right on the horizon line, and we have a very normal looking three-dimensional square, okay? It looks fine. Uh, adheres to all the rules of perspective and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. But if you were to move the two vanishing points closer together, like in this picture, um, the drawing suddenly looks very distorted. Even though it technically is correct and it's following all the rules of perspective, um, because the two vanishing points are so close together, it causes it to look very distorted as if you're looking at it through a fish eye lens. So, if you ever find yourself drawing perspective and you're wondering why your drawing looks weird and you can't figure out what you're doing wrong, it's most likely because you're setting the two vanishing points too close together. That's a very common mistake that, um, that has a very easy fix. So. When I'm drawing perspective, I always like to set my vanishing points um, as far away on the paper as possible. So if I'm working with a normal piece of paper like this, I usually put it on the too far end. Um, and if possible, I like to work with bigger pieces of paper so I can set the vanishing points even further if I need to. And sometimes um, the situation might cause for you to actually put a, the vanishing point off the paper, so you need to you need it to be so far away that you can't even put the vanishing point on the piece of paper. Um, and in the case, in that case, you just have to you know imagine where it is and try to um, keep all the lines accurate to that point. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to uh, perspective that you need to know right now. Of course, there's a lot more to it, but uh, that should give you a a quick crash course. Um, so you can get started drawing perspective. Now, so now that you've learned the basic, let's go through a basic exercise to help you apply all these knowledge. Okay, so before we apply um, all the things we learn about perspective to drawing the human figure, uh, we need to first get used to working with perspective uh, by drawing simpler objects. So in this exercise, I'm going to show you how to take this two-dimensional flat-looking object of uh, three spheres stacked on top of each other and show you how to apply perspective to, perspective to it to make it look three-dimensional like this. And we'll do that by enclosing it into a box like this 
so that we can break the whole process down into a more step-by-step -step procedure and also so you can practice being able to draw um, a three-dimensional object in perspective. Okay, so take out your pencil, paper, and a ruler and let's start drawing. So the first step is to draw in the horizon line. I'm going to put my horizon right here. And once you have your horizon line drawn in, uh, just pick two points to be your vanishing points. I'm going to pick the two points at the very far end of the paper so they can be as far away as possible. So once you have your vanishing point, simply take your ruler and we're going to create the first vertical line. And this line will represent the corner of the box um, that is closest to us. So I'm just going to put it right here. So this box won't be um, evenly tilted. It's going to be uh, one side of it will be more visible than the other. Okay, I'm just going to measure about an inch and a half down from the horizon line. And I'll put in a four inch line. So once you draw on the line, take the top corner of the line and the bottom corner and connect it to this vanishing point. Uh, let's call it vanishing point A uh, with two straight lines. And then do it again for vanishing point B on this side. Okay, so once you have those draw in, it's time to establish the other two corners of the box. So we're going to draw one vertical line on this side that connects this line with this line. And then over here, I'm going to make it a slightly wider of a space because like I said, we're going to see more of this side of the box than this side. And remember, in two-point perspective, the vertical lines are unaffected. Uh, so we're just going to draw it straight up and down. Okay, so now that you have these two vertical lines in, we're going to have four intersections, four points of intersections right there. Next, you want to connect this point to vanishing point A, this point to A, and these two points to point B using straight lines. Okay, so now you have two more intersection points right here and right here. If you connect this point to this point with a vertical line, that will form the fourth corner of our box. All right, so here we have our box. I'm just going to darken the line and erase some of these uh, extraneous guiding lines so we don't get confused. Okay, so now it's, let's divide this box into three equal boxes. Uh, first, by dividing this corner into three equal segments. So we're going to take our ruler, measure it, and then divide it into three. Okay, so now that you have it divided, it's time to connect each one of these points to the two vanishing points, just like we did before. Okay, so now we have four more intersection points, just like in the beginning. You'll notice we're pretty much just repeating the same process when we created this bigger box, except we're doing uh, a smaller box right in the middle. But we're going through the exact same steps. So we have these four intersection points. Now connect these two points to vanishing point A and these two to vanishing point B.
Okay, so let me just darken the box and erase the extra lines. All right, so now we're going to draw in a sphere into each one of these boxes. But before we do that, let's mark out these uh, different planes so that we have a better idea of uh, where they are to make it easier for us to draw it in. Uh, we can do that by marking an X at each one of these planes and drawing a dot at each of the intersections. And then uh, that will mark the point on each plane where the spheres will contact. All right, so all these axes form these four intersections points down the box. And if we did all our measurements correctly, these four dots should line up. Yep, and they do. Okay, so uh, at this point, notice how this box um, is in perfect perspective. Um, you can see the, the top plane, uh, and then as you move down, you see more and more of it. Uh, and when at the bottom, you can see almost all of the plane. Uh, just by following these two simple rules of yielding every line to these two perspectives, we were able to draw this three-dimensional object that conformed to every um, rule of realism. All right, so now it's time to draw in the spheres. So to draw in the spheres, I will be using these circle templates. If you have them, go ahead and use them. If you don't, um, you can use a circular objects that you can trace around or simply draw in the circles by hand. I like to use these templates because it keeps the drawing cleaner so that you can see it better. Um, when you draw in the circles, now in this example, in the two dimensional uh, shape, you're, we're basically looking at these circles um, directly. So the horizontal line, the horizon, the uh, horizon line will be right here. That's why we're not seeing it in perspective. But here, the horizon line has moved above the object and so we're looking at it from above. Um, so when drawing the circles, you're going to see more of the top circle than the bottom. In other words, the top circle will be overlapping the bottom. So you're going to see some overlaps between the circles uh, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna take a circle template and draw in the first sphere will we'll have the, uh, the circle intersect with this point right here. Okay, and as you can see, it starts at this point and it goes past this point a little bit. That's okay. Next, draw in the second circle. And once again, we're gonna start at this point. You see how the two circles uh, overlap a tiny bit, and that's perfect. And then lastly, we'll put in the third circle. All right, so uh, let me darken it and I'm, I'll uh, take out the line where they overlap so you can see how it actually looks. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now let's shade in this object so uh, we can really make it look truly three-dimensional. Uh, I'm gonna pick a light source and let's pretend that the light source is right here and it's shining light down this direction. So it's gonna hit the first spheres right around this area. And so this will be the highlight area and as it moves uh, further away, we'll have the half tone and uh, the shadow's edge. And then for the second sphere, it's going to hit slightly at a lower point. So the full shadow will be right there, the full light. And for the third sphere, it will be more in this area. 
and then in addition to that we're also going to have a little bit of a shadow right in this area that's cast by the top sphere and then the same here so I'm just gonna fill in the tone and then we'll come back and blend it with uh, a tortillon So I basically just uh, use a circular motion around the edge here to draw in the shadow's edge. That's the darkest part of the shade. And then as I move closer towards the uh, full light, I try to lighten my pencil touch to create a lighter tone. And I just did that for all three of the spheres. So now we're going to take our tortillon and blend all this tone together to create a more gradual blend. Now, those of you who have gone through my realistic uh, portrait drawing series will be familiar with this tool. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically just a piece of paper that's been spiral wound into the shape of a pencil. And we use it to um, blend the graphite to uh, help create a more uh, a smooth uh, texture and shading. So I'm just going to start um, by holding it at an angle and we're going to go in this motion around the um, shadow's edge to make it smoother and then gradually lighten our pressure as we move towards the full light. As you can see it's already making everything much more smooth. And here you really want to lighten your touch. And I'm going to darken the shadow here underneath the sphere. We want this to be the darkest tone in the drawing. And just blend it a little bit. And just repeat this process for all three of the spheres. Okay, so there you have it. We just drew our first three-dimensional object in perspective. Now for your homework, just repeat this exercise on your own so you can get used to constructing this three-dimensional box in perspective and working with these, uh, the two vanishing points and drawing the spheres. And this should help you to really internalize um, all the rules of perspective drawing that we just talked about today. So now that you know the basic rules of perspective, you'll be able to transfer this knowledge into your figure drawing and create more dynamic and interesting work, which is exactly what we're going to do in tomorrow's lesson. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to apply what you just learned in this video to draw a three-dimensional human figure. So be sure to check your email inbox for that lesson from me tomorrow. Now if you're watching this and you aren't subscribed to my free newsletter yet, be sure to do that now so you won't miss out on future lessons. It's completely free and only take 30 seconds. Just go to mydrawingtutorial.com forward slash figure or you can just click on the link below this video and enter your email into the new page. And finally, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like button and leaving a comment below. And also, please share this lesson with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus by using the sharing buttons on this page. So once again, this is Ethan from MyDrawingTutorials.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.